This movie begins with a teenage couple parked in a car out in the middle of nowhere in the dark of the night. They are heavily panting and having a great time. But, she hears something. She asked her lover did you hear that? He replies no I didn't hear anything. She tells him that there is something out there. He replies oh it's probably just a wolf or something don't worry about it I'll protect you. She tells him that she heard it again and for him to get out of the car and see what it is. He is not that enthusiastic about leaving the safety of the car in the middle of nowhere late at night to see what's scaring his girl out of her wits. But he doesn't have to leave the safety of his car after all. A very large creature breaks the window and drags him out by his head. His head is torn off and rolls around on the ground. Now it's morning the day after the slaughter. The police have established a crime scene to determine what happened to the two teenage lovers. As one officer picks up the severed head to put it in a bag he remarks, wow, talk about losing your head over a girl, his partner tells him that's not very nice to say. He replies oh I was just joking around. The sheriff arrives on the scene. He asks the deputy, what happened here? She replies, so far all we know is that we have two headless bodies. We have identified both of them. Just a couple of teenagers out for a little hanky-panky. The sheriff says, now I'll have to tell their parents that their kids are dead. They open the body bag so the sheriff can have a look at the remains. He asks, what the hell could have done this? The deputy replies, I don't know, I've never seen anything like this before. They close the body bags. The sheriff asks another deputy about the deep scratches on the victim's car. He asks him if he has ever seen animal scratches like them before. The deputy responds, no, they are like none that I've ever seen. The sheriff tells the deputy that they should close all the parks and hiking trails until they find out what's going on. Meanwhile there is a group of bad guys overlooking the crime scene. They are planning to kill a Bigfoot and sell the body to the highest bidder. They want to let the sheriff and his search party find the creature and then they will shoot it and take the body. Then we have Tina. She has organized a group of people to take into the wilderness on a three-day survival excursion. She will show them how to live off the land by killing whatever they eat. She has them turn off their phones so they will have the feeling of being isolated from the world. She tells them not to worry because she has a special GPS device that if she pushes the button help will arrive to save them within 12 hours or less. Talk about bad timing. They just have isolated themselves from the world just as a monster is on the prowl hunting human prey. Very bad timing on her part. Then we find Sarah Evans a professor of anthropology. She just received a call from a secret source telling about the attack by an unknown creature. She is very excited and wants to be involved in solving this mystery. She tells her assistant to pack his bags because they are going on a road trip. Sarah meets the sheriff. She introduces herself and tells him that she has come to help him search for the unknown creature. The sheriff responds, how did you hear about this so fast, Sarah tells him that we have our sources. The sheriff tells her that he is sorry she came all that way but he is too busy and doesn't need her help. Sarah lets the sheriff know that her office has the full backing of the President of the United States. And she is here by their authorization to find any new species. So I'm afraid you will have to let me help you. The sheriff tells her that she can tag along but not to get in his way. Sarah agrees to his terms. They go to see the coroner. He shows them the bodies. They are shocked by what they see. The bodies have been torn apart. Sarah says no man could have done this. The coroner tells her that he agrees, plus no man is strong enough to do this. The hands, feet and heads were not cut off, they were torn off. The sheriff asks if an animal would do this. The coroner replies, an animal would have eaten the body parts. There were some strange animal hairs found at the scene also. Sarah asks if the hairs were brown and coarse with a foul odor to them. The 
The coroner replies, yes exactly how did you know? Sarah sees the cast of a very large footprint. She says, it's Sasquatch. The coroner laughs at her and says, oh. Sasquatch ha ha. Sarah in a very serious voice replies, yes Sasquatch abominable snowman Bigfoot or whatever else you want to call it, that's what killed these people. And now we return to Tina with her survivalist volunteers living off the land. She inspects a shelter that two of the survivalists just finished building. She asks them, what the hell is that, they reply, it's a shelter like you told us to build, Sarah tells them, that's useless what if it rains. He tells her, look there's not a cloud in the sky. As she walks away the angry survivalist shows his frustration with this survival excursion which he didn't want to be on in the first place. The sheriff decides that it's time to put a stop to all these mysterious murders. He gathers some anxious hunters and more deputies to go into the woods and track down and kill whatever or whoever it is that is doing this. Meanwhile the bad guys stumble upon the survivalist campsite. They come upon what's left of the survivalist's campsite. They have been watching them as they looked for the creature. They assume that they are all dead. But then they notice footprints leading away from the camp. The leader of the bad guys says, two of them are still alive. Let's find them. We can use them as bait. The bad guys track them down, they find them asleep by a fallen tree. The two survivalists are awakened by the bad guys pointing guns at them. The survivalist, his name is Charlie, slowly reaches for his handgun. The bad guy tells him, don't even think about it. He tells them to get on their feet, you're coming with us. The two captives get on their feet. The bad guys take them to their base camp. As they walk through the woods, Charlie stops and tells the bad guys that he's not going any further until they tell him what's going on. The bad guy points his gun at Charlie and tells him to keep moving. Charlie replies, so do you want a piece of me you big ugly deliverance looking asshole, you wouldn't last 10 seconds with me. You got a bunch of muscle but no balls, the bad guy drops his gun and goes after Charlie. Charlie drops him with one punch. The other bad guy says let me shoot him. Hunter is the name of the leader of the bad guys and he tells the other bad guy to stand down. We need him alive for bait. He tells Charlie that, if you try that with me I will rip your eyes out. Charlie and his wife Joy, are now being held as bait for the beast at their base camp. Only one of the bad guys is guarding them from a distance so that the creature won't see him. Joy tells Charlie that she has a plan to escape. She tells him that she will lure the guard into the camp by telling him that she will do anything he wants her to do if he will just let her go. She found a knife and Charlie can cut his ropes and free himself. When Joy is luring in the guard, Charlie can kill him and they can escape. The plan works like a clock. The guard is just getting ready to be pleased by Joy and Charlie kills him. To Joy's surprise Charlie tells her that he thinks that she was enjoying that a little too much, so he is not going to take her with him. She tells Charlie that she only did that so that they could be free. Charlie wouldn't listen and he leaves her behind. As he is leaving his wife behind, Hunter, the bad guy appears out of nowhere and shoots him. Joy begs Hunter to release her but Hunter just laughs and tells her that he's not as dumb as my late friend here, meaning her husband. As he stands there with a smirk on his face, he is completely unaware that the creature is right behind him. It knocks Hunter to the ground. Hunter shoots and wounds the creature. This only makes the monster more angry. Hunter takes off running for his life with the creature right behind him. Joy picks up the knife and runs in the opposite direction. Luckily, she runs right into the sheriff. He has her put the knife down. He asks, who are you? She tells him that she is the only survivor of the survivalist group. The sheriff asks her. What happened to them, she replies, some kind of large hairy monster killed them, my husband and I were captured by a bunch of men and they said they were going to use us as bait for the monster so they could shoot it as a trophy, I think. The leader of the group shot and killed my husband. The creature almost killed him, but he shot and wounded it and then ran into the woods with that thing chasing him. The sheriff has his deputy take Joy to a safe place. As they are making their way to safety the creature comes out of nowhere and kills the deputy. 
It happened so fast that Joy and the other deputy never knew what hit them. All of a sudden the deputy was being dragged away by this monster. The remaining deputy has his gun ready and tells Joy not to worry that he will get her to safety. Then the creature strikes again and kills the last deputy. Joy takes off running as fast as she can, with the creature in hot pursuit. It knocks her down. She is begging for her life but the monster kills her anyway. Just when you think the movie is over and the Bigfoot creature is on the run. There is a big change in the plot. The university professor Sarah Evans who was showing so much concern for everyone's safety stabs her assistant in the neck and kills him. Come to find out she is there for a different reason altogether. The sheriff and the professor come across an old cabin in the woods. They go up the stairs to investigate. While the sheriff goes inside the professor makes a phone call to her secret contact. She tells him, I have found it, lock in on this coordinates. He tells her, I'm on my way. The professor enters the cabin. The leader of the bad guys is fighting with the sheriff. He has a knife and the sheriff tells the professor to grab his gun. She picks up the gun and shoots the bad guy in the leg. The sheriff thanks her for her help. He sits down in a chair to question the bad guy. The professor goes behind him and breaks his neck. The bad guy is confused and asks her, what's your story? She replies, someone is on their way to see you. The professor tells him, you are Hunter Crawford, ex-army colonel, special forces, black ops. Hunter asks her again, who are you? She replies, I'm someone who's going to make more money catching you than you were going to make for killing Bigfoot. Hunter responds, so you're not a Bigfoot hunter. She replies, no I'm a man hunter. The professor's contact arrives. Let's call him Duke, he enters the cabin and looks at Hunter. He asks Sarah, is that him? She replies, yes that is Colonel Hunter Crawford. Duke tells her, your money has been deposited into your account as we agreed. Sarah tells Duke, that's the easiest money I've ever made. It was a pleasure doing business with you. The professor leaves the cabin. Duke walks over to Hunter and looks him in the eyes and asks him if he remembers a young captain under his command in Afghanistan that you killed for disobeying an order from you to murder women and children. Hunter replies, yes so what, who cares about some insubordinate captain during a war? Duke tells Hunter, that was my son and I have been looking for you for a very long time. And now it's payback time. Before Duke kills Hunter, he tells Duke to kiss my ass. Duke cuts his throat with a razor. Well, that was a different ending for a Bigfoot movie. If you enjoyed this video please click the subscribe and like buttons and thanks for watching.